Well, welcome. And uh, thank you so much to Yano River Blue for joining uh, in my first interview. Uh, and these are resources for people who are independently publishing, self-publishing their books. And Yano is an craftivist <laughs> and performer and writer and does a lot of uh, craft activities with kids, including at the Castro back when we were having farmer's markets, right? Yes. Um, so welcome and thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Laura. Yeah, it's a pleasure. So um, we were going to do kind of an interview and you're going to share some ideas for people who create books about how they might extend the books with kids in creative ways. Um, so first, can you just tell me kind of about yourself and what you do in a bigger picture way? Yeah, sure. Um, so I was raised in a very artistic environment. My mom's actually an expressive arts therapist. So that's informed a lot of what I do. Um, and for a long time, I was just making art for myself, uh, whether that's drag or music or movies. Um, and I always found the through line in that was storytelling. Even as a young kid, I would kind of make up stories in my head and so whether it's performing or writing something, that's kind of a way for me to act out these stories that have always lived in my head. And then kind of by accident, I started doing art with kids. And um, I think that it's really important to empower kids to tell the stories that are in their heads. And art is a great way to do that. Absolutely, wonderful. Um, can you say a little bit about kind of how you do engage with kids through art? Yeah, um, so the majority of my experience is having a craft table set up. And for a lot of what I've done in the past, I don't like to focus on specific projects with specific materials lists. I like to kind of just have the supplies there to inspire kids. But as I move toward more online teaching, um, it's been more important to get more specific with projects. <laughs> mm. <laughs> trying to see how I can use what I've done in the past to create a little bit more structure that's easier for parents to prepare or um, educators or authors. Yeah, that makes sense. And I met you, well, I probably met you before, but really saw you in action as a craftivist at the Social Justice Holiday Children's Book Fair, where I think you were helping kids create super queeros. <laughs> Super queeros and activist avatars. <laughs> right, right, with uh, clothes pegs and all sorts of fun crafts and yeah. hot glue gun, I think. <laughs> yeah, clothes pen dolls has been a really popular craft. And that, again, is something I kind of stumbled on of just having those supplies on the tables and kids just naturally gravitating toward that. I think there's something, um, certainly for me, there's something innate in children that want to like create a version of themselves or like an avatar. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I think books are also a good way of doing that, of like seeing yourself reflected in, in someone else's story or creating your own. Yeah, now that makes sense. And that you're connecting from the book that the kid can read, but helping to give them a kind of way of actively engaging and sort of putting themselves literally, right, into the right. book. Yeah, that's great. Well, speaking of books, that's a good transition. And you're going to provide two ideas, right, for uh, ways to extend a story. But yeah. hopefully these will also inspire people to like be able to do it in their specific ways, right, with books that they've created. Exactly. Um, and you're very kindly, your first one, I think, is going to link to a book that <laughs> I've written called Sled Dog Jackson. And this is about Jasper, a little Jackson, who's absolutely sure that he can win a sled race. <laughs> um, and in fact, not to be a spoiler, but he does, but through a kind of path where he also learns how being part of a team is really fun. Um, and you were going to give an idea for something that people might do with a book like this. Yeah, so one of my favorite craft materials is pipe cleaners. Um, it's something I've been making things with since I was a kid. And so I've kind of come up with some different ideas. Uh, so animals, of course, are a great thing to make with pipe cleaners. So I thought it would be fun to make a dachshund. I usually start with the legs. Um, so I'm going to start with the front legs. And it's kind of just 90 degree angles. This is something I think a lot of kids do pretty instinctually. Um, is just like making little animals, making little stick figures. Um, so I think something like a dachshund is pretty 
fairly simple for some a kid to kind of create. It might not look exactly like what I'm doing because I've been doing this for like 25 years. <laughs> but um, I think if you give kids pipe cleaners, they naturally want to create something. Um, and so if you're working with a book with animals in it, that is a great way to do it. I always start with kind of a skeleton. So I've got like the front legs there and a starting of the body. And then I'm going to kind of do the same thing with back legs. And it's funny. So I read your book um, a few months ago. And I actually didn't remember that the, the, the main character's name is Jasper which is funny because I actually just adopted a Yorkie with my partner. She found one at a rescue and we've been going back and forth with names and Jasper was actually in like the top three. <laughs> oh, I think it is really popular. I have a, actually I actually have a friend whose son is named Jasper, but I think I've heard of other dogs named Jasper too. Um, yeah. So what, what name did you end up going for? Well, we're still deciding, but we're leaning toward Cricket. Because he's very <laughs> lanky for a Yorkie, got these long legs and likes to jump. <laughs> <laughs> is he settling in? Yeah, he is. We've got another little Yorkie too named Oliver. Um, so get, getting to be friends. Yeah, good so time I'm, to have dogs. I'm starting to have, you know, front and back legs, but I'm realizing the legs look a little long the body looks a little short and one of the things I love about pipe cleaners is it's so easy to adjust so I'm just giving a little extra room and you can kind of like squish them together <laughs> <laughs> and again this is maybe going to be a little bit more complicated than a kid would do I'm going to do the tail just folding it in half with pipe cleaners the ends are really pointy so um, it's always good to like try and cover the ends as much as possible which is why okay. I bent this instead of just having a, a pointy end sticking out and then uh, okay. I'm just wrapping around the body. And where do you get your pipe cleaners? Um, pretty much any craft store has them. Um, I mean, I think right now with with uh, with shelter in place going on, if you have a local craft store, finding out if they are open for delivery or curbside pickup is a great way to support local businesses. If you don't have that, then, um, you know, just doing like a, uh, you can look on Google and do the shopping results and just see who's, mm. who's got a good price on them. Yeah, I know like Blick, which is our store we often go to locally, has got an online store. Mm -hmm. um, so it's probably good to see, even if your local craft store isn't actually physically open, they may have ways for people. To yeah. Work and they need the business. So if there's a way to support your local craft store, that is great. I, I got a lot of supplies from um, uh, Cliff's Variety in the caster. Okay. So pretty much, I've got Huge. everything but the ears. So I'm just gonna do, again, like a little loop-de-loop -loop for the ears and just stick those right there. Oh. <laughs> The ears totally finish it off. It does, yeah. And it's then, funny because I forgot even the droopy ears. That's such a like signature thing for the dachshund, right? Absolutely. All right. So yeah, what, like like I said, I've been making these since I was a kid. I actually do stop motion animation with these too, which is another um, cool thing that works well for something. <laughs> it's got that ability to move and hold its shape. So that could... Right are a little more technologically advanced. I use an app called iStop Motion. There's quite okay. a few like phone apps that you can animate with. If you have a little tripod or something, um, that's a fun way to do it too. And if you're doing animation, I do recommend getting a Bluetooth shutter remote so that you can click the picture because if you're hitting the phone, it moves it a little bit. So That makes um, sense. Oh, what a bunch of great tips. And I could also see it would be really fun if you were reading the book out loud to kids and you just gave them a ton of pipe cleaners. They can just yeah Play. absolutely yeah well he, that is adorable i so wish i could hold him in person but <laughs> i'll have and to get pipe cleaners and make my own <laughs> maybe a little sharpie for the eyes a little marker or um i do have some like tiny googly eyes that you can hot glue on um, so that's a way to take it further too <laughs> oh my god that is so adorable i love it <laughs> All right, well, so the next one, and maybe um, we can also talk about 
Reflection Press, right, run by Maya Gonzalez and Matthew Smith, and I know you've done quite a lot of collaborating with them um, in different ways. Do you want to say a little bit about that? Yeah, I had the good fortune of meeting them actually at the Castro Farmers Market, which I did two nine-month seasons of just having a craft table set up, and they're kind of in that neighborhood, so um, we instantly connected, um, and their kid Sky is such a delight as well. Just a very creative family, which reminded me a lot of my family. So there's that instant connection. And I've got a few of their books here with me today. Um, so uh, this is the one that you had. And then this is a kind of similar one, but I think geared towards slightly younger kids. And um, one of the things that I love about their work is that there's actually recurring characters. Um, so in They, She, He, Easy as ABC, we're introduced to a bunch of characters by name. Um, another fun thing being in their world is that a lot of these are based on real people. For instance, I opened L, and this is Lourdes, who <laughs> is uh, another person that I've worked with with them and actually wrote this book <laughs> which, which is a great great book yeah they call me mix me llaman maestre um which is a bilingual book also kind of about gender um so i really love the characters um they also have a newer resource that's a deck of cards um which also has these characters in them and it's a way to play with pronouns and mm -hmm. so this book goes through these different characters, gives you their name, gives you their pronoun, and uses it in context, shows how you can use a person's name as their pronoun, you can use they, them. Um, some people go by more than one, like he or she. Uh, and then it shows that a different dance move too that they're doing, which is- ah, So cute. awesome. <laughs> um, so for this one, actually, I wanted to just touch on too, since they are doing different dance moves. I think movement would be a cool way to interact with this book too, of like seeing if the kids could imitate the pose in the drawing or create their own poses. What, since the, each character kind of has their own style of dance, it would be fun to like see uh, what, what dance moves inspire those kids or feel like reflects them. Definitely, that's, and that's a great, shelter in place thing to do right and even if you were on zoom with a bunch of kids you could all watch each other do your little dances that'd be awesome yeah so um since i really love those characters so much i thought it would be fun to draw them myself so i picked out some of my favorite characters here there's a lot of good ones to choose from and this video is sped up a little bit take your time with it I'm using just a regular piece of tracing paper and you do want to be careful not to press too hard with your pencil because it will imprint onto the page. And I did leave out some of the finer details like the flower in this character's hair or the pattern on the other character's skirt. And so I'm just going over all of the outlines of things. So I'm using a window as a light box. I've got my tracing taped on the window and then a piece of thicker paper taped up over that. And with the light coming through, I can see my pencil drawing and going over it in pen. You could go over it in pencil and then wait till you have it on a flat surface to draw in pen. But I wasn't too concerned about getting the lines super even or fancy because I really love Maya Gonzalez's illustration style here where it is a little bit sketchy and more accessible. So I'm just tracing the outline of this character's body rather than putting the details of the clothes and then I'm scooting the tracing over underneath and then I'm only tracing the clothes and not the character's head or their hands. And then I'm scooting it over one more time and this time I'm going to leave the details of the clothes off, but trace the shape of them, and then I'm going to color it in. So I had fun coming up with a new color scheme for this character, and I cut a little slit in the bottom, and then I cut another shape out to create a stand, and cut a slit coming from the opposite direction on that. And rather than just a single cut, it does work well if you leave a little more space by cutting 
two parallel lines very close to each other, and then cutting out a wider slit. So this character, again, I had fun adding a new color scheme to their outfit, but that is not all, because this outfit I added little tabs on the side, so you can actually take this one off. And then I made them a tie-dye onesie pajama outfit. <laughs> And if you don't have all the fancy papers that I'm using, sometimes printer paper is all you need, uh, especially if it's a lighter weight paper, you can see through it enough to trace, and then you could just cut that out and glue it onto cardboard. Those are great. So we've got pipe cleaner kind of characters and drawing, and then extending the drawing by creating kind of paper dolls and giving your own outfit. Mm -hmm. um, those are that's three fantastic ideas for people who publish books but want to then connect the books to readers right. and give the readers tools. Um, yeah. Are there any other kind of tips you have or ideas for someone who has a book and is like, I really want to share this with kids and I want some kind of creative ideas of how to do it? Well, I think that having, uh, you know, if you haven't published it yet, uh, adding a page in the back that has things like that might be good. Um, or if your book has a website, adding some of that. So another book that I got at the Social Justice Children's Book Fair is I'm Jay, Let's Play um, uh, by Beth Reichmuth, illustrated mm -hmm. by Naomi Lamb. And this one's really cute because it's just a bunch of kids uh, playing at like a preschool and they're making pizza. I love the opening thing is just oh, yeah. pizza slices. Um, so this one actually I love in the back, it has uh, a Dear Reader page and it asks some questions about, uh, about gender and how to be sensitive to it and uh, ways to address questions that kids might have. So that's really valuable, having some resources for how to have a dialogue about the book, um, especially if it's something like gender that you know, the kids will have questions about. Um, mm -hmm. But this one's really cute where they, they are, they pretend that they make pizza and they hand it out to all their friends in school. So that might be another cute thing is um, like drawing slices of pizza. And again, it, since we're sh filming the steering shelter in place, uh, mailing it to your friends might oh, be. Oh, you could write a little letter or card or draw pictures or something. Yeah. So That's you sweet. use the mail as a cute. <laughs> <laughs> and I could see also um, Play-Doh, right? If you had an actual preschool, you could make pizza out of Play-Doh and yeah. kids could give it to each other. Absolutely. Um, yeah, because I know in this book, they have incredible resources at the back, right? With a whole lot of questions for kids and also for parents, because talking about gender can be complicated, right? And confusing, depending on someone's experience. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, Zeta Elliott has a book, Milo's Museum. I don't know if you've seen this. I don't uh, know. Everything by Zeta Elliott's fantastic, and she'll be featured definitely on an, inter an interview. But so this is a kid, Milo, who goes to the museum and doesn't see herself reflected in what's at the museum. And her aunt, Vashti, and I love this picture, um, explains to her what a curator does. Um, and inspires Milo to create her own museum. And she interviews, she, she has things that are important to her, but also to her family. And then she invites neighborhood kids over and they're all excited about it. So she changes it from Milo's museum to, um, let's see if I can find the page. The People's Museum. <laughs> and she takes uh, kind of donations from different people. But what Zada has done at the end is I have a whole thing about make your own museum. So with tips for kids about how they can do it themselves. So it's, and then there's a whole afterward too. Nice. So I think one of the things that's so inspiring about independent publishing is that people can really create these tools and resources and reflections, right? For kids who don't get to see themselves often enough in Absolutely. what mainstream publishing does. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and I wanted to touch on that a little bit more too of, I think, that you can continue the story. And that's what something like this or a paper doll does is um, it's a way for you to be part of it and feel even more reflected 
is continuing the story, acting it out with your own little characters. And it's also a way to inspire kids to tell their own stories. I love that. That's great. Yeah, and that's so important. And that's, these, none of these children's books would matter, right? <laughs> Unless the point is they get to kids, they read them, they feel inspired. And the idea that they then become storytellers themselves um, and actually, that's another resource that I think would be great for people to know about, which is um, Write Books Now, right? Is the Maya and Matthew and um, right, get right. the name exactly right and provide that resource, but that have like videos and resources and tools that really help kids and families just create their own books. Yes. Um, so we love Reflection Press <laughs> and all of these people who are really generously putting their time and energy and resources into creating these books. Um, and, and yeah, let's give them lots of love. <laughs> yes, definitely. Well, thank you so much. And, you know, we'll make sure you share any kind of information about yourself and it's, you know, people can have you come and do classes for them, right? If, yeah. if they have kids sheltering in place who want mm -hmm. some activities. Yeah, or just reach out to if you want to, if an author or publisher wants to brainstorm more ideas about how to do interactive things. Um, I love brainstorming. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you so much and uh, looking forward to even more inspiration and ideas. Absolutely. All right. Bye. Bye.